I will just let you into our hearts. God, I pray that you are glorified for this, this season. God, we know that nothing else in this world can bring us the peace and can bring us the healing. Nothing else can bring us that but you. We believe that you are the mighty healer. You are a father that holds us. so many of you guys like crazy. So what kind of guy Nathan is? My biggest encouragement for you, Kai, everybody else here tonight, is we have a God who walks with us. The same exact God that walked on water. The same exact God that fed 5,000 the same exact God that raised Jesus from the dead walks with us every step of the way. And there's no greater person that we can have that can walk with us through every single day of our lives. But not only does God walk with us, you have people standing beside you who are with you every single day. The days that might be extremely difficult, the days that might be a little bit easier to bear, but you have people all around you who are in this journey of life with you, and you have God who loves you, who's walking with you daily. He's not going anywhere. God promises he'll never leave us, nor forsake us. He's not deserting us. He's not going to abandon us. But tonight, I just want you to know that in this room, there are people that your brother impacted like never before. And I just believe the ripple effect is going to take place because I believe God is not done using the life of Nathan. He's not done using him. He's not done using you, Kyle. He's not done using your brother, Matthew. He's not done using your parents. He's not done using you guys. He's not. The next thing I wanna let you know is I know it's through stormy situations, things that have happened in my life through stormy situations that God has done some of the best transformations in my life like never before. Times I didn't even know who God was, who God is, and I got a greater understanding of who God is. So I really believe with all my heart, God is going to do a transformation in your life like never before. Just like everybody's life here tonight, God wants to do a work in your life. Don't run away from God, but run towards God. It's okay if you have questions. It's okay if you might be a little bit upset. It might be okay if you're a little bit angry tonight. Because when loss happens in our life, when pain happens in our life, the natural response is to have questions. The natural response is to have anger. But there's one thing that God wants us to do, and he wants us to wrestle it out with him. He doesn't want us to walk away from him. He doesn't want us to run from him. But he wants us to run to him. He wants us to pour our hearts out to him. He wants us to trust him. My biggest question for you guys tonight in our life, we have a beginning and we have an end. But in the middle, we have this dash, what I like to call a dash. We have this dash. 
And I guess my question for all of you guys tonight who are here, what will your dash be? Because we can't avoid death. We can't avoid death. We can't avoid it. We can't avoid it. Whether we're 50, whether we're 70, we're all going to die one day. We can't avoid death. So how are we going to live our dash? How are we going to live our life to where one day we can look and see a room full of people that we've impacted in our life? This is what it says in James chapter 4. The working, not working. James chapter 4, I'm going to read it in here. Screens down. James chapter 4, verse 14, it says, Why, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Our life is but a vapor, it's but a mist. We could be here one day, we could be gone tomorrow. We're not promised tomorrow. So my question for you guys, what are some things in your life that you know aren't right, that you know you need to make right? Because I believe with all my heart, when we believe life is a mist, it's a vapor, we could be here one day, we could be gone tomorrow, that we won't leave things undone. Maybe tonight the biggest thing in your life is you are, do not have a right relationship with Jesus. If you were to leave tonight, you couldn't rest in peace. See, one thing I believe with all my heart is that Nathan can rest in peace. Because some of you tweeted this earlier today, and I just want to read it because someone had a conversation with him through a text message. I want to know where he stood in his relationship with Jesus. Did he know Jesus? And this is his response. He said, I am a Christian. I believe in God. I lean on God. I pray every day, meaning I talk to God and have a relationship with God. So someone says, as long as you're saved, he says, I am, of course. Could you say that with 100%? Because we're here to remember the life of Nathan tonight, but we're here to celebrate the life of Nathan. Because Nathan is in the best place he possibly could be in his entire life. He has met Jesus face to face. The person who can fulfill our life, who can satisfy our life. He is meeting the greatest person on the face of the planet right now. The best place that he could ever be, and I get it. It's still difficult, it's still hard, but one day there'll be no more sorrow, no more pain. And right now, for the life of Nathan, there is no more pain. There is no more sorrow. He has met Jesus face to face, so he can rest in peace. My biggest question for you tonight, could you rest in peace? Do you have peace that you would know if you were to die tonight that you would spend eternity with Jesus? Because I guarantee you with all my heart, if Nathan was standing here tonight, he would want you to have a relationship with Jesus. He would want you to have a relationship with Jesus. But maybe you're here tonight, and through the life of Nathan, you know things are not right when it comes to your relationship with your parents. See, when all this was happening, there was a game that, that happened on Monday night, but that all went out the window. Because when things happen like this in life, the most important thing is people. And the most important thing will be people in our life. The people who you impact, the people who you have touched. So what will your dash be? What will your dash be? Because life is short. We're not promised tomorrow. Life is short. But good news is God is close. God is close. Even when God might feel absent, even when he might feel distant in our lives, God is close. And we, even when we can't understand him, God is close. In Psalm 34, verse 18, it says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Some of y'all are brokenhearted tonight. To those who are crushed in spirit. Some of y'all are crushed. I really believe that it's at times when we go through the most pain in life that God is the closest to us. And if, there any, if there's anybody in this world who knows what you're going through, God, anybody who knows what you're going through tonight, 
It's God. You want to know how I know that? Because he gave up his one and only son, his best possession that he possibly ever had in this entire world. He knows what it feels like. He knows what it feels like. God is close. But I get it. Some of your guys are like, but his dash was so short. Why couldn't his, his dash been until he was 80 years old? I don't know that question. I don't know the answer to that. Only God knows the answer to that question. It's just like when we were growing up, our parents allowed us to do certain things and they didn't allow us to do certain things. And we didn't understand that at the time, but what we did is we believed that our parents loved us, so we trusted them. Sometimes we don't understand in life when God allows things to happen and he doesn't allow things to happen. But we can know that God loves us. He's for us. He's with us. And we can always trust him. That his plan will always be better than our plan. And he's always close in our life. And the biggest thing that we can know too is he wastes nothing. Just like we say, nothing is wasted. God doesn't waste a thing. God still wants to use the life of Nathan like never before. He wants to impact people just like he's done tonight and will continue to do. It says, for God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose in Romans 8, 28. God works for our good. Works for our good. God's going to bring some of the greatest good out of this like never before. So tonight, time is short. Are you waiting to change your life? Because when you wait and you're like, oh, I'll change my life later, Satan celebrates. Satan wants you to keep putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. And he's celebrating more and more and more the longer you wait to change your life. The longer you wait to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to keep doing me. I'm going to keep living my life. And he keeps saying, wait, wait, wait. And God's saying, why wait? Maybe here tonight you don't have a relationship with Jesus. The biggest thing I believe with all my heart is Nathan will want you to have a relationship with Jesus. When we know God, we can know peace. We know him. We can know peace. Tonight, can I tell you, whatever you might be going through, what you might be feeling tonight, God is close. Even when it doesn't make sense, God is close. And he wants to use Nathan's life for his glory, for his good. Let's pray. Maybe you're here tonight. His head's bowed and eyes closed. You would say, man, I do not have a personal relationship with Jesus. The most important decision you can ever make in your life is where you will spend eternity. Like I said, there's a God who loves you so much that he gave up his best possession, his only son, to pay the price for every single one of your sins. Every single one of them. No, ma no matter how bad you might think you might be, no matter how good you think you might be, God paid for every single one of your sins on the cross. He offers his forgiveness. He offers his grace to you. He says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, he has been raised from the dead, you will be saved. Not you might, not 75%, but 100%. Maybe here tonight, the greatest thing that I believe Nathan would want to see is for you to give your life to Jesus and not wait a second. Not wait a second. So right where you sit, with heads bowed and eyes closed, if you're here tonight and you say, I do not have a relationship with Jesus, I want to invite you to pray a prayer just like this. God, tonight, I give my life to you. I ask for your forgiveness for all my sins. I repent of them. I turn from them. I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for loving me, for dying for me, for raising from the dead for me. I give you my life tonight. With heads bowed and eyes closed, maybe you're here tonight you made the greatest decision in your life. 
Heaven wants to celebrate with you. I want to celebrate with you. So with heads bowed and eyes closed, maybe that's you. You'd say, I made that decision tonight. I would love for you just to slip your hand right up. Slip it right back down. That's you tonight. Anybody tonight? Raise it up high. Raise it down low. I just want to count them. One. Anybody else? Two. Three. Anybody else? Four. Anybody else? Five. I'm going to miss hands, but I'm at least going to try to count them. Anybody else? Anybody else tonight? Anybody else? Six, I see it. Seven. God, tonight, we celebrate the life of Nathan. God, we thank you for the lives that he impacted, and God, we thank you for the seven people who crossed over from death to life. Because of the life of Nathan, because of his testimony, because of his witness, God, you're already working for our good. You saved seven people from eternity and hell. You saved seven people from the, the punishment of our sins. God, we thank you so much for your grace, for your love. God, I pray in light of life being short, of it being a vapor, of it being a mist. God, I pray that we wouldn't waste a second in making your name known and declaring your praises. God, we wouldn't waste a second to tell a family member, to tell our brother, to tell our sister about Jesus. God, I pray we wouldn't waste a second to tell our friend in school. But God, tonight I pray that you would be the God of comfort. God, that you would be the God who is close to the brokenhearted, to those who are crushed in spirit. God, I thank you that you are a God. You are a refuge. You are an ever-present help in times of trouble. And God, I pray that we would be still and know that you are God, the creator of the universe, the one who created everything. And this did not catch you by surprise. God, I pray that you would be with the Moore family. God, they look unto the hills, and where does their help come from? It comes from you, the maker of heaven and earth. God, so I pray they would look to you, and they would sing, it is well with my soul. Because, God, we can celebrate the fact that Nathan is with you. He is having the time of his life. He is with the best person you possibly could be with. And he is shouting, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. He is not experiencing any more tears, any more pain, any more sorrow. He is in the best place that he possibly could be. So God, I pray that we would rejoice, we would celebrate because of it. And God, I believe that Nathan would want us to continue to impact other people. He would want us to move forward. So God, I pray that you would give us strength each day to move forward. God, I pray that we would see that your grace is sufficient for us and is enough for us that when we are weak, God, you are strong. God, we thank you for being the God who loves us more than we ever could fathom. God, we love you. All these things I pray. Amen. Tonight, in just a second, we have an amazing opportunity to quietly walk down to our gym and light candles in honor of Nathan's life tonight. You might ask, why are we going out in the gym while we are, aren't we doing it outside? One of Nathan's biggest passions was basketball. So I thought, what a better place. Someone mentioned me today, what a better place than to do it in the gym, celebrate his life. One thing I would love to do before we walk down to the gym is I would love for the Greer basketball team to come up. Kyle, if you don't mind coming up, we just want to circle around you and pray for you. Can we do that? You come up here for me. Greer basketball team, y'all make your way up. Come up here for me. You just want to stay in the middle. You guys just want to circle around them for me.
God, I pray that for God. God, I pray that he'd see his brothers who are standing around him. God, I pray that he would be strong in the Lord in your mighty power. God, but I pray that he would know that he has brothers who are standing beside him. He has a church that loves him, who cares about him, who's going to walk with him every step of the way. God, I pray for your basketball team. God, I pray that you would use them for your glory. God, I pray that they would be more united than ever to not only go through life, but to play the game of basketball. And God, I pray that we would give you glory throughout this season for the life of Nathan. God, I thank you for all that you're going to do. God, we just pray for continued healing. And God, God, I pray that you would allow him to see it's okay to cry. God, I pray that we would cry alongside him. God, we'd be there when he needs us most. God, and I pray that you would allow him to see that he's going to make it. God, tonight, may you be exalted. May you be glorified. We love you. And all these things I pray. Amen. Tonight, I'm going to let Kyle and the team go first. Here in a second, walk down to the gym. I'd love for you guys to circle at half court. And as you walk in the gym tonight, you'll be able to get a candle and a basket. I want you to hold that. We're going to light the candles from the middle towards the outside. I want you guys to remember the life of Nathan. And when you guys are holding the candle, I want you to, to know that seven people gave their lives to Jesus because of the life of Nathan. And I want you to know too in our world that's dark, that needs hope, that needs life, that we can be the light of the world. God wants to use all you guys and how Nathan has impacted you to be the light in this world. So may I invite you guys I'm going to have you quietly walk down. I'll have Jane lead them for me. You guys will have an opportunity to go down this curtain and walk towards the front of the gym. So if you guys want to walk down there, you can follow Jane. You can go down this curtain over here. But I'm going to ask that you guys quietly walk down to the gym. I'm going to have different sections go at a time.
seven or more who gave their lives to Jesus because of the life of Nathan. May I encourage you to let somebody know. Maybe you want to tweet it out. Maybe you want to Instagram it out. How God has changed your life for eternity because of the life of Nathan. We want to celebrate with you. We want to rejoice with you. So I encourage you. Let somebody know the greatest decision you can ever make in your life. But tonight I want to remind you, Friday at Washington, visitations from 6 to 8. And Saturday, the funeral is at 11. I want to encourage you guys to come out and support. Come out and support tomorrow morning at Greer 805 in the gym. Come out Thursday night when the guys play Blue Ridge. But I encourage you guys to continue to support, to lean on each other, to come back more unified than ever, but lean on God in his strength. And he will work it out for the good of those who love them who are called according to his purpose. May I invite you guys to celebrate the life of Nathan. You guys just raise your hand.